What's up, Econ John here. Welcome back to the third and final section of the Ramsey Cass Koopman's model, at least in the basic sense. Uh, in this video, we're going to put everything together and solve for equilibrium in it. Let's go. All right, pro tip there's going to be a lot of derivation in this video, so I suggest you just write everything down in order to get the most out of it. Okay, so solving the RCK model, step number one. You have to rewrite the utility function. So just like in the solo model, it is easier to work with variables that are in per effective labor terms. Recall that our instantaneous uh, CRRA utility function is defined as U at time T is equal to consumption at time T raised to the power of one minus theta all over one minus theta. We also want to know that our consumption per worker CT could be rewritten as AT and lowercase ct, where ct is consumption per effective labor. This gives us u as a function of t is equal to AT times ct raised to the power of 1 minus theta all over 1 minus theta. Recall the property of continuous time dependent exogenous variables at time 0, like AT, this being that AT is equal to A at time 0 times EGT is equal to AT. This goes and gives us the following. So the first equation that we go and we get is u at time t is equal to a at time 0 times e raised to the power of gt raised to the power of 1 minus theta times ct or time raised to the power of 1 minus theta all over 1 minus theta. So now let's go into the utility function. So recall that our household's lifetime utility function is defined as the following. So putting one into our objective utility function and recalling the fact that L at time T is just equal to L at time zero times E raised to the power of N, which is the growth rate of the labor force times T. And with a little bit of algebra, we go and we get equation number two, which is U is equal to B, right? Where B is defined as A at time zero raised to the power of one minus A times L at time zero at all over the number of households integrated over e raised to the power of negative bt where b is defined as rho plus n minus 1 minus theta times g times ct at raised to the power of 1 minus theta all over 1 minus theta so you're going to integrate all of that so this is a little bit of a scary slide but i'm just going to speak it out real quick just like how we rewrote our utility function to be in perfective labor terms we're also going to do the same with our budget constraint Recall that our budget constraint is defined as the following. Rewriting this knowing that C of T as in consumption per worker at time T is equal to technology at time T times the consumption per effective worker at time T and that our wages per worker is equal to the technology at time T times the wages or the wages per effective labor at time T along with the previous knowledge that our technological stock at time t is equal to the initial technological stock at time zero times e raised to the power of the technological growth rate g times t. And our labor force at time t is going to be the initial labor force, which is at, going to be at time zero, times e raised to the power of the growth rate of the labor force times t. And that our initial capital stock, is at, which is going to be at time zero, is equal to the effective capital per worker at time zero and A, which is gonna be our technolog technological stock at time zero and our labor force at time zero. With a little bit of algebra, this will yield equation number three, which is going to be our budget constraint in per effective labor terms. So this is the final step of solving the RCK model. To solve the RCK model, we set up a constrained optimization problem of the household looking to choose CT, which is our consumption per effective labor, which maximizes lifetime utility. Our Lagrangian is the following, which is just maximizing the utility function subject to the budget constraint. The household chooses infinitely many CTs, right? Because this is a continuum, right? Because it goes from an integral from zero to infinity. But since our choice of variable will only include the parameters at its first choice conditions, we can just ignore the integrals. Right, it follows that our first order conditions are just work out simply, right? So once we solve for our first order conditions, right, which is going to be B times E raised to the power of beta T times 
consumption, effective consumption per worker at time t raised to the power of negative theta is equal to lambda times e raised to the power of negative rt times e raised to the power of growth rate in technological stock plus uh, growth rate in labor force times t. If we were to take the logs of both those sides, right, you get a much cleaner looking equation. So we're not quite done yet. Since we are solving an overlapping generation model, we must also differentiate with respect to time. Since in our first order conditions, we just differentiated with respect to consumption per effective worker, we have to also differentiate to, with respect to time. So we're moving really in two directions. So to deal with our return on the market integral, we apply the same logic on before, but we are only solving for RT at each period T. So we are taking the derivative of both sides with respect to time, and we get negative beta minus theta times the change in consumption with respect to time over C is equal to negative RT, which is the return on the market at a given time T, a specific time T, plus the growth rate in labor force plus the growth rate in technology, right? Rearranging this, we find that our consumption maximizing growth rate is going to be defined as the following, right? RT minus rho minus theta g all over theta. This is the Euler equation, and this is the fully solved RCK model. So that's the RCK model. I'll see you in another video. Take care.